little object, chalk, has been around for over 2,000 years. Over that time, we've seen much progress. Nuclear power, moon missions, gene editing. And yet, this remains symbolic of the way we teach in our classrooms. I grew up on a diet of science fiction. Asimov, Arthur C. Clarke, Star Wars, Star Trek. Growing up as a kid, I would often wonder, how would things be in the next 30, 40 years? And between then and now, we have seen real progress. We speak with machines, we 3D print organs, and we have these smartphones that seem to know more about us than we do ourselves. And yet, there is one place that is truly unchanged. Right here, the way we teach. Let's just zoom out for a minute and look at change through the ages. The Stone Age lasted for around 100,000 years. The Bronze Age for 2000. The Industrial Age started 350 years ago. The Digital Age 30 years ago. And we are already in the age of AI. Change, it seems, is accelerating over the ages. With time, it's getting faster and faster and faster. Let's do a quick thought experiment to look at this. Imagine you were born in the Stone Age. Now, what if you were to go to sleep for a hundred, five hundred, or even a thousand years? When you wake up, chances are the whole world will still be the same. As against that, if your great-great-grandfather were to wake up suddenly now after 150 years, he would be stunned. Stunned by the way we live, sometimes so high in the air. Stunned by the way we fight our wars. Stunned by the way we travel, how far and how fast. By the way, we can just summon food by clicking on an app. And yet, if he were to walk into our classrooms, he would be oddly at home, very comfortable. And the reason for that is that change hasn't happened at the same pace for all spheres of human activity. We have what I call rocket speed changes. For example, we travel thousands of times faster than our cousins in the Stone Age. A single weapon today can be a million times deadlier than a spear. And a single voice can reach out to millions, given the right platform, say TED. As against that, we have slower pace change zones. Life expectancy, for example, has gone up by three to four times only. Happiness, emotional quotients, I don't even know if it's changed. But one area that is surely in this walking speed change zone is our education system. For years and years, we have the same classrooms, same desks, same chalkboards, same one teacher teaching out to multiple students with the same syllabus and exams. Oddly, the one area of human activity that is supposed to drive change is itself so slow to change itself. Let us now continue with our thought experiment. What if today you are to go to sleep and wake up after 10 years? Well, when you wake up, I predict, you will be stunned. And the reason for that? AI. AI is changing the world around us faster than we can imagine. AI, artificial intelligence, simply put, is when machine perform tasks we normally associate with human intelligence. And AI is no longer science fiction. It is embedded in our reality. The last few years have been this tremendous runway for AI to get better and better. Which is why when you wake up after 10 years, you will be stunned at the changes around you, from medicine to communication to machinery to uh, cars to the way we work possibly even to society itself. Eric, the ex-CEO of Google, says that 
AI is likely to change business, society, and humanity itself. Elon Musk believes the future is all about hobbies, since work will be optional. And Jeffrey Hinton, the father of AI, warns us about the existential risks of AI linked to use of AI in war. But I would like to lend my voice to thinkers such as Bill Gates, who talk about the positive potential of AI, the potential of AI to help us solve humankind's toughest challenges, challenges like longevity, old age health, disease eradication, climate control, space missions and colonies. But I do not think that is possible unless we change the way we work. And that is not possible unless we change the way we teach and learn, maybe even redefine education itself. For our education systems were never designed for change. They were designed for control, for classrooms and chalkboards, for conformity, for convention. Now, I still remember uh, taking my first board exam in class 10. At that point of time, hundreds of thousands of students like me sat in exam halls and answered questions. Questions like, draw the digestive system of a frog. Now that's a legit question, but for a time when knowledge was king. Today, knowledge is abundant. It's everywhere. Why don't we ask questions like, this is the digestive system of a frog. Go through it. Now tell us what will happen to it in a future where there are no small insects. And suddenly the accent changes from rote and memorization to utilization of knowledge and creativity. For the exam of the future is not about neatly copying what is already given in a textbook. It is about boldly innovating and thinking of solutions to problems the answers to which we do not even know yet. And that's the type of learners we need. Learners who ask difficult questions. Learners who innovate boldly. Who collaborate despite differences and who are deeply rooted in ethics. And the only way to develop these kind of learners is by giving education the same technology that is changing the world which is artificial intelligence. Let me now take you through some use cases of AI in learning. I'll also talk about some of the work we've done at our university around these use cases. The first of them is around use of AI for personalized learning. <clears throat> Frankly, the inspiration of this comes from my own experience teaching my daughter's uh, mathematics. My elder daughter was good with numbers. Even at the age of three, she would giggle her way through math problems and games. But the younger one would get a brain freeze everything she saw, something as abstract as a number. And I thought, OK, this is going to be slow, and it's going to take me a lot of time. Let's put in more effort. Until one day, we came to fractions, and we were not seemingly making any progress at, at all. And that's then, one day we were cutting a cake, and she said, oh, this is three pieces of cake on a plate, and I'm goggling one. This is three by four. And then suddenly, she got it. And I also got it that learning for her was not about abstract numbers. It was about colors and stories and images. Inspired by that, we have developed at our university a personalized learning system that does two things. One, it reshapes your curriculum based on your interests and abilities. Two, based on your learning style, it feeds you different kinds of um, uh, material, which could be reading material, watching, or even doing. And the good thing is that we've done an early pilot, and there has been an increase in student engagement by around 40%.
The second use case is actually based on one of education's most interesting pieces of research. It is called Bloom's 2D problem. Now, if you see the graph to the right, that is what happens to students when they do one-on-one -on -one mentorship. And what it tells us is that this is by far superior to the graph at the left, which is when we teach them in conventional classrooms. What this model actually tells us is that one-on-one -on -one mentorship leads to even the average student being at par with the top two-person student in traditional classrooms. And this is why it's called a problem, because it pinpoints the biggest issue with today's education, the point that is broken and never fixed, which is our classrooms. Now, there have been many pilots over the last few years in trying to solve this. At our university, we're trying AI avatars of our professors. We feed the material that uh, teachers teach as well as their teaching styles. This, by the way, is my own avatar. It answers questions on the subjects that I teach. It is available 24 by 7. My avatar, this fellow never sleeps, <clears throat> doesn't ever get a cold either. Uh, one more area of uh, relevance to uh, how AI can help us is around skill-based learning. Now, this came to us a few years back when we said, let's improve communication skills across our university. And somebody said, we need around 150 communication coaches. And that's neither practical nor is it scalable. So we built what we call Sikandar, which is an AI-based communication coach. Very simply, what Sikandar does is it asks a question and the student asks back, and based on this, it makes a map for the student to improve his or her communication. Sikandar is based on the three V's of communication. V for vocal, which is how you speak. Then V for verbal, which is what is the emotions behind the speak? Are you speaking too fast? Are you speaking too slow? Are you confident? Or is there some doubt? And lastly, about visuals. Are you frowning? Are you smiling? Uh, how is your body posture and such like? And I'm happy to say that today, Sikandar has already trained around 400,000 students in 400,000 use cases at our university to help them get more confident while speaking. And the last part actually is around exams. Now, my whole experience around taking exams was very simple. I would learn one or two days before the whole exam, then I would come, sit in the exam hall, and spill out whatever I knew. Then I'd walk out, and maybe the same day, sometimes it took two, one or two days, I would forget everything that I was taught. Honestly, there are times when I even forgot the name of the subject. But the point is, why do we have this last-minute, short-term evaluation of memories? With AI, we have the opportunity for an AI tutor to be with the student throughout his or her journey. The AI tutor knows exactly what the student knows, and therefore, there is no need for these stress-making exams. Now, at our university, we've tried a form of this, and we, what we do is we do gamification. And during this format, and pilot is what it is currently, what students do is they just play games, either individually or as a group. And at the end of the semester, this contributes to their grade point. As a professor who's a colleague also told me, he said, this is the first time I've seen a long waiting list of students willing to take an exam. And that's what gamification can do for our examination systems. AI has the power to help learning break the shackles of that, has, that have been there for so long, shackles of mediocrity and shackles of convention. As Arthur C. Clarke has said, any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. So what's the magic here? Remember that Bloom's 2D problem? We know that even the average student, the average student with one-on-one -on -one mentorship, 
performs at par with the best two-person students in traditional classrooms. But this is true for standard one-on-one -on -one mentoring. What about mentoring with superpowers? Superpowers powered by AI, such as personalized learning paths, 24 by 7 assistance, gamification, early detections of risks. That would raise the bar. That could help us create a whole generation of learners that are significantly better than even today's best learners in traditional classrooms. Imagine that, and that would be magic. But there's one more thing. Imagine all these learners working together to solve humanity's most difficult challenges and problems. What would happen then? That would be magic. Let us then take the first step to getting this magic into our learners' lives. It is time for every school, college, and university to start one pilot for AI with learning so that our learners can get the learning they deserve. Thank you.